I have exercise nine that I'm just going to run through. So exercise nine talks about how you can convert a, a flux to a mono or a mono to a flux and all that stuff, right? Maybe not mono to a flux, but you can do the conversions between the two. And there are a bunch of use cases where those are pretty handy. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. Reactive sources, int number flux. Okay. What do we need to do? Print the size of int number flux after the last item returns, right? There's an operator for this. So this is int reactive sources dot int number flux. There's an operator called count. Of course, one way to do this is to basically do this, convert the stream and get the count but that would be blocking. Is there a way to do this in a non-blocking way? How do you get the count of a flux in a non-blocking way? Well, guess what count returns? Count returns a mono of long, okay? So it is gonna return a long value, but it's not gonna return it immediately. It's gonna return it when the last event gets, oh, sorry, when either the completion event happens or the error event happens, right? Only on the terminal event, it is going to return. So it's some, it's a mono, right? You can subscribe to that mono and you can say, I want this to run when you have a value. Okay, so I'm going to do a system dart out println. Okay, now what's going to happen is it's going to wait until the last terminal event happens. And then after that, it is going to return a mono and that mono is going to resolve to the value which happens to be the count. So this is a count operator, which gives me 10, as I would expect. All right, the next one, collect all the items from int number flux into a single list and print it. Again, what you have is two different ways to do it. One is you can block and wait, in which case you're going to get the list. We've already seen that in the previous exercise. But wouldn't it be good if you were to get a mono of a list so that the mono resolves when this flux is complete. Well, you can do just that. So there is reactor sources dot int number flux dot collect list. Okay, there's an operator called collect list. And what does this return? It returns mono off java dot util dot list off t. Okay, in this case, it is gonna be mono off list off integer. So now I can subscribe to this thing. Okay. And now it is going to print this list only when this mono resolves. And when does this mono resolve? When this flux emits a terminal event. So it is going to collect all the items and then it's going to return that list. Okay. Again, it's waiting for all those to gather. And then we should get the full list. So here is one to 10. Again, if you put a log over here, you're gonna get all the individual numbers. If you put a log here, you're gonna get just one, which is the list and that gets issued when the termination event happens. All right, the final one, transform a sequence of sums into adjacent, of adjacent two numbers. So basically what you want to do is you have a bunch of numbers that are coming through, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What you want to do is transform it to one plus two, three plus four, five plus six, seven plus eight, and so on. Okay, so you're basically changing the, the number of elements. Well, we've seen filter, which changes the number of elements in the, in the flux. But here what you're doing is you're basically changing it to a combination of two elements. You're basically getting, getting one element getting another element and then emitting the sum. Again, getting in one element, quiet, getting another element, emitting the sum, okay? That is possible too. And that is possible using a buffer operator, okay? So you do reactive sources dot hit number flux dot buffer, okay? Buffer takes in an argument, which is how many of the items you want to buffer, okay? So when I say buffer of two, every two numbers, every two events in this, flux 
results in one event in this flux. I can say buffer of three, in which case every three events in this flux returns in one event in this flux. And this event gets emitted only on every third event of this thing, right? The other two events, this thing does not emit anything in correspondence, okay? So I'm gonna do a buffer of two. Now, what does this return? This returns a flux of a list, okay? So what am I doing here? I'm saying bu buffer two items. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna return a flux where each item is a pair of items. And it's decided to do that using a list. So I'm gonna get a list with two items. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to do a map. Now what I wanna do is do a sum, right? Instead of a list, I want a sum of those things. So I'm gonna take the list as the input to the map, and I'm going to do a list dot get of zero plus list dot get of one. So I'm replacing each list of two items with the sum here. And then of course, I'm gonna do the subscribe. Okay, of course, I'm not checking here. Now, if I were to change this to one, now we have an index out of bounds. Well, the uh, the list exception, but you can you can add checks there and check you know see that as well. But here, now we get a sum, right? This is one plus two, three plus four, five plus six, and so on. Okay, so this is how you can transform. So there are a lot, a lot of operators. And it really doesn't make sense for me to go through all of them. So I highly recommend you um, take a look at the Java docs, take a look at that uh, link that I shared, which is which is very handy for kind of seeing what, what you can do. Like what you wanna do, what are the operators that are available, right? And addressing all of those is beyond the scope of this course. But hopefully I've given you a good taste of some important ones that you know how it works and you know how to, uh, how to apply them.